Hi Spurs people, thank you for tuning in again. I normally announce this as the Steve Perman podcast, but why would I? Because you obviously know that, you've tuned in. So thank you very much for doing so and giving us your time. Um, as ever, uh, we have Tom and Howard uh, with us to help us along. Uh, and we're going to start off talking about the AC Milan game this week, Wednesday evening. And, of course, we've got some history against that fine club. Um, early 70s and 2010-11. Uh, and Howard has got memories particularly of the first one. And I'm, I'm sure Howard is going to tell us about his private jet he went on. Not his private jet, but a private jet on he went to the Milan game in 2000s. Um, so... Uh, yeah, Howard, would you like to start and tell us your memories, please, of the 1971-72 uh, season, uh, our sort of build-up to, to the AC Milan game, and uh, your memories of it? We we played the first game at White Hot Lane, and they were clearly a very tough side, and twice they made the same mistake of trying to clear from their own lines, not realising that Steve Perriman himself was there to take charge of the situation and he scored two goals one from each side of the corner of the net and those goals were enough to see us through and they possibly... probably did know i was there but they didn't know that i could shoot yeah <laughs> okay for which, for which we're all very grateful yeah so um tell us about the alan mullery situation howard as you saw it from a supporter's perspective Mallory um, had come back after the World Cup with a few injuries, as, as all, almost all the players who came through that Mexico World Cup did. Um, but for, earlier in the season, I don't know if he fell out with Bill Nick, maybe you'd know that, Steve, or whether there'd been some other problem. But Bill Nick not only dropped him, but loaned him out to Fulham, his original club. Yeah. yeah. I think there was an injury involved in that, Howard. I think it there was be. an injury. Yeah. And I think it was the thinking was that he was going to go to Fulham and play games to recover. Right. I think that was the point. But uh but then, it, for then, but then it carried on. It carried on for too long. And as you yeah. said, we we've sort of forgot about him a bit. And I and I forget Monday afternoon bought, bought, bought the evening paper as soon as it was out. And it said Mallory in the team. And I thought, blimey, he hasn't played for six months. He's now gonna yeah. be back in line. Anyway, thank God we did. We lost that game 2-1, but the two goals we scored, rather we won that game 2-1, but we went through an aggregate tool. The other goal coming from Mallory himself in yeah. San Siro, which took us through to the final, which was um, a slight disappointment in terms of we're playing an English club because we went Wolves in the final, I believe. Yeah. And Alan Mar Matt Martin Chivers scored two magnificent goals, one from a long way out and one with a header. Yeah. And at the other end, Pat was almost single-handedly repelling the invaders. He was amazing that night. Exactly. And that took us the, that gave us the UEFA Cup. Well, Muller scored the winning goal, didn't he, at White Hart Lane? So he was brought back in the, at the end of the that, season by Bill Nick, and that was it. That was two victories I've sampled at White Hart Lane. I didn't play in the second one, unfortunately. I was suspended. Yeah. yeah. But um, but yeah. I, I'm not sure. I, I know I've mentioned it before, but I'm reading the history book here. We played that AC Milan game at home that we won 2 1. Yeah. Was the fourth game in six days. <laughs> I'm going to read it out to you. We played Coventry City at home on March 31st and won 1 0. April the 1st, so that's two games in two days. We played West Ham United away and lost 2 0. April the 3rd, so that's three and four days, we played Ipswich Town away and lost 2-1. And then on April the 5th was the AC Milan game. I was given an, an hour's worth of the highlights of the AC Milan game because everyone considered it to be the Steve Perriman game. And of course it was. Um, and given to me by Irving Scholar. He had accumulated all the highlights from the television coverage. 
uh, because they Spurs were writing a book about the Spurs glory nights, European yeah. glory nights. So um, I've watched that a number of times, that hour's worth. Okay, it's not 90 minutes. But I've got to tell you, for four games in six days, there was not a hint, not one hint of tiredness. Now, it was an extremely cold night, Howard. I don't know if you remember that. Yeah. extremely cold. There was a, a, a gusty wind that made it worse. And we went a goal down yeah. to the famous Italian defensive tactics. Well, they weren't too defensive when they scored their goal, by the way. A fantastic goal that Pat had no chance. Um, but you sort of, this is your chance to win the tie. And therefore, we kept going. And there's a there's a final as the reward for getting through this game, or the this is the first part of a of a game. So um, I'm particularly proud of that fact that those four games in six days, and we had to fight from being a goal down, and did so in good style. We put a lot of pressure on their goal to get the second goal, particularly. Well, no, we put pressure on their goal. For 90 plus minutes and um yeah that makes you feel good and i always say to people when i give talks can you imagine saying to bill nicholson or eddie bailey i'm tired <laughs> it just would not it would not have worked they were from a tough school they'd come through hard times um etc recovering from wars or even being involved in the second world war and trenches and all that goes with it and hardship so they were not going to stand for any tiredness i i have this thing about players and 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 changing the team and resting players for the next game if you keep telling a player he's tired he's going to be tired that's my mm -hmm. opinion and uh so if you don't ever mention it then it doesn't apply it really doesn't apply so um that was a, a, a great uh, a great victory, led on to another great victory um, over Wolves and, uh, a, you know, a trophy that we're all so desperate of in these days, aren't we? Mm -hmm. So, um, Tom, what about the 2010-11 game? Just remind us of the situation, please. I think, that, I think the game at the San Siro was one of the highlights of... Harry Redknapp's era at Spurs for sure. Um, it? We it was it was the first season that we'd been in the Champions League in um, since, since it got rebranded from the European Cup, and it was the first time we got to hear that music at um, yeah at White Hart Lane in the in the Young Boys uh, qualifier at the beginning, where we had to come from a a, a bit of a scary uh, first leg where we went three 0 down after half an hour or something, and it uh, was scary, eh? Oh God, definitely, definitely. And then, um, but yeah, no. We after, after that game, we really got into the swing of things. Um, when it came to Champions League uh, football, we seemed to adapt to it really well. Um, Crouch in particular seemed to uh, seemed to enjoy the occasion every time we played in the Champions League, and certainly that Milan game, we went into it. Um, I don't know if anyone really. I think we had a couple of injuries, um, a couple of key injuries, from what I can remember, and we ended up with a midfield of, um, I think it was Palacios and Sandro. Um, yeah. But I just remember Sandro having a great game at the San Siro. Uh, we had, we played really, really well in the first half. I had a few chances, uh, which we didn't take. And in the second half, certainly Milan turned up the heat and we ended up breaking with about eight minutes to go, I think. Uh, Aaron Lennon with the afterburners and um, and he squared it for Peter Crouch to, to tap one in. And it was just a... Um, Absolutely brilliant, brilliant moment. Wish I'd been there for that. I was there for the home leg two weeks later, where we uh, where we drew nil nil. William Gallas ended up having his um, probably the game of his Spurs career. Brilliant. Um, yeah, which is obviously not something you thought you'd be saying three or four years before that. But there you go. Um, and uh, and yeah, we got we we got through to the quarterfinals, where um, obviously it kind of all went downhill within a few minutes of the the first leg at the. Um, Bernabeu gets Real Madrid, but but no certainly way. that certainly that game at the uh, at the San Siro, I think to go there and win one 0 and the team they had at the time, you know, I think yeah. um, uh, and it's also memorable for Gattuso going toe to toe with uh, with Joe Jordan on the touchline, which yes. uh, I don't think any of us will will forget, and uh, I don't no. know if he really 
knew what he was up against there when he uh, when he did that. But it's a great image, mm, isn't it? Super. Great image. Well, how had you went to that uh, away leg? I you did. Milan? And the the great thing was the guys I sat with in my season tickets at Tottenham at that time included the the chief executive of Goldman Sachs. And basically, ah. he said to the guys in the row, Do you, you, know, you come on my jet next week, whatever it was. And I kind of looked at him and he said, yes, of course, you must come because, you know, you sit here, sit here every week. Since then, I only know him to say hello to you. So I've never been, I've never been invited back. But it was pretty ah. good. For what did you do on that jet, Howard? Exactly. <laughs> I was innocent. <laughs> wow. And um, so you you were you were there at the game. I was there at the game, front front row. Great 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 atmosphere. And yeah. it's a very very intimidating place to play. Yeah. I remember, of course, I'm a young player. I think that season was my we took going now back to the the first AC Milan tie that we spoke about. Um, with one two one. The bus took forever to get into the stadium. It kept getting stopped. Supporters were whacking our coach, the windows of the coach, with branches. I mean, it wasn't going to harm you, but it, they were trying to intimidate you. Sure, sure. And we went out onto the pitch, and there was stuff raining down on us. And I think we were advised to get off that pitch very quickly by the by the police then. And it wasn't easy to get out having having completed the win. So I suppose they the team was up against that type of thing in the, the away leg later on, Howard, and, and you witnessed it as such. It wasn't as bad as in the 84 final against... Um... Wolves? No, 70, that's, eight, that's 73, 84. Oh, uh, of course. Of course, Anderlecht. Anderlecht, yeah. And um, in the first leg, we were, went, went on the coach, got on the coach at the end of the game, and they, it was in, the coach had, for them, God knows what reason, stopped facing inwards to a cul-de-sac, and all the, all the San Siro people were, all the, all the yeah, Milan people were all over and, the coach. Anderlecht, the Anderlecht and, people, yeah. yeah. And they were doing, as you say, with the, with the bits of, Rush and God knows what throwing and banging yeah. on the coach and we we're facing the wrong way can't get out. Yeah, I I always wonder about tactics like that because yeah. if you're playing for a top team in England, the one thing you're not going to be is afraid or able to be scared. And if you got if you got something about you, and that's where the experience of Mallory mm. can come in 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 my era and Jennings and Knowles and England and Gilzine, these are international players. So rather than get frightened, you know what? You get you get angry with the opponents mm. and you play angry. And sometimes that's to the, that's to, that's a deficit for the opponent that, that do this nonsense. So um so yeah. So some good memories there. Let's hope that we have good memories out of this second leg. Being one nil down, do you think we're going to do it, chaps? Tom first. I think so. Um, we didn't offer that much at, at their place, but they didn't offer much either. To be honest, I thought Skip and Saar played really well in that game. Didn't they? Um, and I think I think at home under the lights, we'll have enough to 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 do the job on the evening hopefully uh show a bit more than we did at the weekend so let's well, supporters need to make this a special night a special european night don't they yeah yeah definitely we'll and not do, not we'll do what it. we spoke about of the, those away games in andelect and milan etc um do it by noise yeah. noise it, and it it means everything to the home team and you can give power to their legs. You can give pace to their legs. You can give, you can make their heart beat a bit faster. And, and that's really what we need on th this type of night. So in a way, I think we've got to forget about the last couple of games. Not easy to forget that, is it? Because actually I'm going to remind it, all everyone now. But um, 
I I I've read quite a, a nice piece on Facebook, or someone sent me a text, and it says Spurs have forgotten who they are. Mm. Mm. And they gave a Bill Nicholson quote, and I, Bill Nick obviously is a hero to us all. And uh, what he says is worth listening to. We must always consider our supporters, for without them, there would be no professional football. It would be better to have more fans watching football the way they like it played, rather than have a few fans watching football the way we would like it played. So I think that's a very interesting quote from Bill Nick and says something about the Spurs history and of course the game carries on, the game changes as such but I think in general without going too deep into it, I think our supporters are more worried about our style than actually the end result. Meaning, if we played the right way with the right intentions, then it's easier to accept a defeat. And I think Tottenham has been based on that from go back however long you want, but I can I can trust Bill Nicholson in the team in the 50s and being successful and then leading the team in the, the 60s to success. You know, that was based on a positive approach to the game. And, okay, it's it's too naive to say, oh, we're going to attack and we're going to score more goals than you. But why do you think Tottenham Hotspur is so famous? There's so many, so many fans around the world. It's because of the style and um, Tottenham and way the, and the backup to that and yeah Tottenham way and you know if you if you support Arsenal you could laugh at that you could say well the Tottenham way doesn't win trophies mm-hmm. uh, and I'm sick of hearing that but um, you know you, you, how important is the FA Cup these days how important is the League Cup these days how much money do you gain as a club by winning those those trophies that were so important in our era, Howard. But but it's important to the supporters. And remember what I just read out about the supporters. It's important to them that we have success. And I'm I'm a great lover of Poch. And there's all sorts of rumours around that, that I don't know anything about, but that just rumours. But he had a quote saying that, you know, when you talk about winning trophies, it's it's almost for your ego. And I'm not sure about that quote. I'm really not sure about it. It's for your confidence. It's for the supporters' belief. It's for the players' belief in each other that you've been successful. You At the end of a season, you've made yourself credible by... by ending up with a trophy to to prove that you've been successful and i remember going into to six six trophies i won in my career i am sure that i didn't know before i went into the game how much money we were going to win yeah that was secondary when you've done your job and you've played and hopefully you've won, a month later you get your wage packet and there it says FA Cup bonus or League Cup bonus or UEFA Cup bonus. Wow, that's nice. So anyway, um, let's hope for a good Wednesday night. Um, at least we're not playing Thursdays. Um, Channel so 5. I- <laughs> So I've had a I've had an interesting week. I um I was in the Lake District, uh, myself and Kim and a couple of friends that we normally go away with. Um, Danny, my friend, had a problem with his uh, passport and didn't arrive back in time, so we ended up visiting them in the north of England, Huddersfield, 
and then going on to the Lake District for a couple of days. I've never been there before. I'm not proud to say that because it was so beautiful. So, so beautiful. Then he went back to uh, Huddersfield for one more night. And then uh, on the way home, I did a, a talk up in Peterborough for the Peterborough Spurs. A great group of people um, organised by Kev and Mickey Hazard had a big part to play in that. But um, I have to tell you that the, the supporters are worried. They care. They care about their team. But they're worried. And, um, and not out of real, real utter criticism, but they're worried about the team. And, and basically, it was the way that the team play and the tempo that... Uh, that they think Spurs have forgotten about, which would be a great shame because um, that's that that reputation has been built up over many many years, and we don't want to see it see it ease off. Um, so uh, people talk about me um, not being an ambassador of our club. Um, it doesn't suit me to be an ambassador. Um, for lots of different reasons that I don't really want to go into. But Steve Perriman does not need a Spurs badge or a Spurs tie to walk around and prove to people that he was attached to Tottenham. Uh, my face, my face and my character and my history is Tottenham. And um, just to name a few countries that I've been to to speak in, to, to to give the Tottenham message and tell these people about Bill Nicholson and Keith Birkinshaw and Pat Jennings and Mike England and Cyril Knowles and Jimmy Greaves and all the great players and Glenn Hoddles and Aussies and and you know I can even talk about didn't play with them but Gaza and Bow and Modric and and fantastic fantastic players that we've had the pleasure to watch. But I've spoken in New Zealand, Japan, Norway, Iceland, and the US. That all. <laughs> that all. That's all, Howard. So, so I'm going to Portugal and Malta in the summer again to talk to Spurs groups. Um, gonna gonna meet up with some English people that go to Portugal for a get together, Spurs supporters. I think there'll be a bit of uh, beer consumed. Um, and unfortunately, I don't drink anymore, but I um, hope they don't mind that. Um, but particularly nice people from Malta have, have, uh, want me over there to talk to their, their group, which I'm delighted to do. And uh, Howard, you're coming with me to um, National Day in Bergen. Yeah, very much looking forward to it. Which, you, which you, you'll love it. You'll absolutely love it. And the last time you couldn't be with me, I spoke to the the uh, Bergen group there, supporters. Um, possibly going to speak in Oslo, uh, another group, quite a big distance, but it's a great train journey, one of the best, 10 best train journeys in the world mm. between Oslo and Bergen, so that should be a, a plus. But while I'm there, I would like to go to Denmark because I keep reading these Danish things on Facebook and um, we've had some some Danish players and still have in, in our midst so I know that we've got a strong supporters club there so anyone listening who fancies inviting me to uh, Denmark I'd be delighted to come uh, National Day in Norway is, is May 17th so probably the weekend after that I think we play Brentford and Brentford has a lot of Danish links yeah. And um, I have Brentford links, so so it's quite an apt day for me to be able to go there. And um, so yeah, I'm I'm sort of appealing that I'd like to go to Denmark to push the name of Tottenham Hotspur. So anyone out there listening, uh, please see what you can do. Um, yeah. So thank you, chaps. Much appreciated. I've enjoyed your company as ever. And your memories. 
and um, we'll regroup, regroup probably in a couple of games time when the AC Milan game is over and we'll know if we've got continued interest in the Champions League and um, see where we stand on keeping that fourth place. I, d I don't think we're going to get above fourth, do you? No, no. We've got Liverpool breathing down, next, breathing down the next now as well, haven't we? No. After uh, their gentle win yesterday. At least well, what United supporters. It was fantastic, wasn't it? But unfortunately, I got in and um, I'd been out. I was I was um, presenting prizes at a walk-in football competition for over sixty-fives. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's it's quite nice when you turn up to present prizes, and the people who you're presenting to actually know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> That is quite refreshing. Even be it the West Ham supporters and Arsenal supporters and wherever. But uh, of course, there was some Spurs as well. So Somerset won the tournament and uh, I was happy to present them with the, the prizes. But when I get back in the car, I'm freezing cold. I am freezing cold. Turn the radio on and it's 3-0. Wow. Something's gone wrong because... No one saw that coming, did they? No, not no to one. that level. Anyway, then eventually I get indoors. First thing I do is turn the television on, and now I'm watching it. Wow. And didn't Sunes do well with uh, Gary Neville? That was wonderful. Neville. Gary Neville getting all he deserved. <laughs> he, uh, Graham Sunes made me proud to be an ex-colleague, yeah. I've got to say. So, um, so well done, Graham. I'm not sure he listens to this, but uh, well done. And um, let's see where the next few games take us. Good luck for um, for Milan. Good luck for Forrest at the weekend. Um, I'm actually going to the Milan game, chaps. I think you heard my appeal some podcasts ago, searching for an invite. And I'm, I've got an invitation and I'm going to go to the chairman's suite and invite it by Donna Cullen. So, um, so yeah, looking forward to that. And so, let's, let's uh, get our voices going and primed up for supporting our club and uh, get another famous victory against AC Milan. I'm into so, that. Thank you, chaps. And uh, speak to you soon. Come on, you Spurs. Thanks. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Thank you.